Hey Trevor, can you take a look at this real quick? All right. Mm, what you got there? I had a little bit of an accident last night. Uh, uh, this was in the machine and there's a couple broken tools. You can come take a look at it. Any note saying what happened? Nope, just oops. Just oops. All right, let's go take a look. All right, what do we got? So I changed out all the broken tools. Okay. And I still have a hundred thou offset into a plumbing. A hundred thou? Yes. And that was a little bump? <laughs> oh, 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 we're gonna have to get somebody in here. Ah, I got a guy. I know who can do this. Hey everyone, this is Trevor Kremen. And because of Eric or somebody's little mishap on on our Citizen L32, we got to get somebody here to take a look at it. And we got the guy. We got our guy. Our guy is Chuck Austenberry from Dynamic Machine. And he is going to come in and he's going to do a multi-series video with us on how to check machine alignment and adjust alignment on your Citizen Swiss Lays. All right, Chuck, thanks for coming to our rescue. We no messed problem. it up. And you get it fixed up for us. I was down the road having chicken anyway, yeah. so I felt like I oh, you know, got to pull back. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do, or anytime you want to check the alignments on a Citizen machine, again, these will carry over to all the different Citizen machines. Okay. We're going to start with the headstock. The reason we start there is the headstock is possibly not going to be affected by any type of a bump or crash. We're going to take the headstock, we're going to put an indicator in that, we're going to come up to the guide bushing housing, we're going to pull the housing out and actually sweep the casting. There's a separate casting that's bolted to the main casting. That can get shifted. That's going to ensure that the headstock is in line with the guide bushing housing. And at that point, we can take the sub spindle and line it up to the guide bushing housing. And then we can line up the back stations to the sub spindle. And then lastly, we're going to line the gang spindle up. Okay. That will give us a total alignment of the machine back to factory specs. And we're going to show you where those factory specs are in a new machine. Every machine comes with a sheet from the factory. When this left the factory, it was inspected. It has those inspection numbers. It also has the allowable uh, tolerances for those inspections. Okay. All right. Let's try it. Let's do it. Good. Okay. So right now, what we've got to do in order to get this guide bushing housing out is we actually have to loosen up this apparatus here, which is a jack shaft. This is actually the belt that runs through the jack shaft, through the jack shaft, and there's another belt that goes around the guide bushing. So this is a synchronous rotary guide bushing setup. So as I turn the main spindle, the guide bushing also turns. So what we're doing now is exactly the same procedure that's in your manual that would allow you to go to what we call non-guide bushing mode, except we're just gonna loosen this apparatus up allow us to get the belt off the guide bushing and pull it out. This jack shaft has to be kept straight. It can't be cocked. There are adjuster bolts that are set and locked in place. Do not turn those because when you go to bring this shaft back up against those bolts, that's what's gonna ensure they're straight. If you invertly turn one of those, it'll get it cocked. And as this headstock runs forward, you're gonna be pinching that jack shaft which will cause premature bearing wear, noises and whatnot in this system. This casting is what we're gonna loosen up. It's actually sitting against this stop bar, which is perfectly straight right now. So it's important when you loosen up this that you don't loosen up the stop bar or else your jack shaft assembly, this whole casting will be cocked. So all we're gonna do is loosen up these bolts right here. There's one Allen head screw here and one here that will allow us to take this casting away from the stop block. And then when we go to reassemble the machine, we're simply going to pull this casting back to the stop block, which will ensure that it's straight and the belt tension is correct. Okay, so we can see that the drive apparatus, jack shaft, whatever you want to call it, is loose. The belt's loose, which tells me that the guide bushing belt is loose. Now we're able to come in from the other side and remove the guide bushing and go ahead and set our indicator up to sweep the housing that the guide bushing sits in. Okay, last step on this side is we're gonna remove the back portion of the guide bushing cover. We'll be able to see the belt and take the belt off the guide bushing pulley. 
Okay, I've removed the belt from the back of the pulley and actually came right out, which is a good time, I suppose, to check and make sure none of the teeth are missing. And we do have a little bit of this particular belt has a couple of teeth that have marks on them. So I would recommend to the owner and the shop owner that he get some replacement belts and replace those. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is remove the bolts from the guide bushing itself, the housing, and we're gonna remove that. There's a oil or a coolant pipe. We're gonna remove that first. I've already taken the bolts out of it. Now we're going to take the guide bushing housing out. Now one uh, word of caution here is it's a good fit. It's a precise fit. If it comes out straight, it'll come out easy. If it gets cocked, it's, gonna, it's going to stop on you. You can tap it around lightly, but do not sit there and pound on it with a hammer to try and get it out. It should come out, if I pull it out straight, very easily. We can see it's loose. <laughs> I got it cocked. All right, so now I'm gonna find a brass drift or something right here. <laughs> of course, it's gonna do what I didn't want it to do on it. All right, let me see if I can get these jack screws in there. Now the jack screws are actually, there's three places for them they're actually gonna help pull this out. Like I said, normally you don't need to do this, but this is why they're in there. It should allow us to get it even again, which should allow us to pull it out. Again, it's a good fit, as I said. There it is. There's your guide bushing housing. This is what your perishable guide bushing goes into. This is what supports your stock. It's driven by the main spindle by the belt that we took off and has bearings in it. It can be rebuilt. This one feels pretty good. So now what we see looking in there is this separate casting right here that we're gonna indicate next. That's going to make sure that our guide bushing is in line with our main spindle. And again, that's where we wanna start our alignment check. Well, that's the end of this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and check us out on the next one.